I'm imagining myself driving this boat. You know, it, it, it's great. It's got a ton of space in it. It'll be fun to drive, really will. The next thing for us to do is actually work on our breast hook. We're going to install our breast hook, but uh, I wanted to introduce you to our newest patrons on the board. Alex Nagel, Michael Hill, David Helliwell, Julia Taylor, Gareth Draper, Eric Breaker, Jacob Main, Ryan Parsons, Doug Doty, Doty, we've been arguing about that, Jason Jablonski, Tim and Caroline, Rich Dodson, Guy Callow, Dennis Fallon, Harry Levinon, Christopher Gall, Owen Cummins, Sven Ferrer, Thomas Young, Joseph Stinson, Martin Reed, CJ, Pete Savak, Mike Wright. Now, you guys are kind of part of life around here now when you get up there on the board, and uh, this is going to continue, I'm sure of it. It's fun for me, it really is. It's really fun to see it growing. The next thing we're going to do is cut the breast hook. I've got a little pattern already made up here. It's just a piece of paper, actually, and it's taped down. And, uh, you know, it's really nothing fancy, I can tell you that. It's just cut crudely around the sides and uh, taped right over with a bunch of pieces of tape just to keep it stretched out a little bit. And I put a stick across behind it. I imagine there's a ton of ways to do this, but I also wanted to keep it pulled back like that. So what I'm actually going to do is go underneath and trace it. I removed the pattern, and I've got that down there waiting for me. The only thing I want to do right here, still, is to take the bevel right here, uh, because I'm going to cut it right to bevel. Let me just tighten that up a tiny bit. Let's try this side. Oh, it's exactly the same thing. Nice there. Nice. So, I'm going to take a protractor and see what kind of a bevel I've got. Oh, it's 20 degrees right on the nose. So that's cool. That's 20 degrees both sides. Now I'm going to take the bevel on the, where it con contacts the stem. So I'm going to go up underneath here, push it like that, just like that. That is uh, 10, 20, 30, 36 degrees. So that's what I'm going to cut it, 36 degrees up there. 20 degrees on each side. Well, check this out. This is the piece we're cutting the breast hook out of right here. Now, it's a white oak crook, but one side is the trunk of the tree and the other side is a branch. So the branch is coming off the tree on a 60 degree angle like that. We're using the top like that. And it's got all kinds of nice figuring in it. It's cut pretty much exactly parallel to the medullary rays. So it's quartered on these two sides. On this side, this is the center right here. So this would be the branch over here. And this is the trunk, because this trunk is, uh, this part's wider. What we're going to do is get ours right out of in here, like that. And it might be pushed up quite a ways to get it to fall in there. Look at the figuring in this thing. This thing really looks nice. You can see the annual rings in here. They're kind of round up here, but then look in here. They're nice and pointed. All of them are pointed, and they line right up with each other. So we're going to try to keep that right down the middle of the breast hook like that so it looks even on both sides. And the, this approach angle will be exactly the same coming in there to the center right down the middle. So, you know, it's a pretty, pretty piece. It really is. And look at this darkness right in here. You always see this when you cut one of these things right down the middle. I don't know exactly why that is if it's because it's been getting a lot of moisture in there or whether or not that is actually trying to bind it together because it's trying to break itself apart right here all the time. The branch is trying to fall. So it has to be pretty strong in there and it looks pretty strong to me. You can see the medullary rays in here, especially this one because it's so broad. That means that it's cut right parallel to that medullary ray and the annual rings are going this way, vertical. So that's kind of like a quartered piece right in here and another piece over in here. Now, this is the branch because this heart is quite a bit closer than the heart is to here on the other side. So it's beautiful, you know. It's kind of got a little bit of a one-sided affair down here, but then up in here it's almost, it's almost identical on both sides, pretty. I'm going to take the pattern and cut it with the scissors to the lines and stick it down on there and uh, see how it comes out. Well, there's a million ways of patterning something like this, but uh, you know, this is about the easiest way that I can think of, really, you know. You, you do have to cut it on the line, but uh, 
You know, it doesn't have to be incredibly, incredibly accurate. No pattern you could make up there with wood, plywood. I, I don't care what you do. It wouldn't be any more or even as close to accurate as this. Well, how do you like my little bandsaw? It's an Atlas Power King. Almost every little 12-inch bandsaw on the market was a copy of this saw right here. This saw was old when I bought it in 1968. So I've had it for an awful long time. And I really learned a lot about bandsaws by using this one. And one of the main things that I've learned about bandsaws is that you put the teeth in the middle of the rubber wheels because otherwise they drift all over the place and overtax the guides. You know, I even use steel guides because the blade hardly touches it. it never wears out. They don't get hot. It's key stock, half inch key stock. You know, what I'm doing here is I'm cutting all the extra off of this thing because it makes it easier for me to follow the lines that I need to cut. And uh, I've cut it maybe a quarter to three eighths of an inch away from the line square and then taken all the weight off like that and then they're all going to be undercut when they cut at the lines. Well, we've cut most of the weight right off of it at this point. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to show you how this thing works out. This is the outside line of it right here that I'm going to cut. And I cut all that weight off. Uh, then I've got the inside. This is the width of the gunnel on both sides. And that's the radius right there that I'm going to cut into the breast hook. So what we're going to have is all this part. You know, that gets cut away. The sapwood's kind of on an angle like that on this piece, so it's probably up in here anyhow. So this is the meat of it right in here. This is going down one side, this is going down the other side, and this is buttoned up against the stem right here. And uh, I've got it lined up with these points really nice, so that'll be right dead center. It's, a, it's the right spot right there for it. I'm going to cut this one on 20 degrees, this one on 20 degrees, and this one's going to be cut on 36 degrees. So, it's one time all the way around. Uh, I'm going to cut this, cut this, cut that separate, all three separate, and then this gets cut all the way around in one cut and out the other side. And it has to be so that this is no more than a foot away from here, because otherwise I won't be able to make that swing in the bandsaw. My bandsaw's got a 12-inch throat. Now I'm going to set my bandsaw at 36 degrees here, which is the cut that I'm going to make at the forward end of the breast hook. There it is right there, 36 degrees. Tighten it up. Now I'm going to adjust my bandsaw to 20 degrees, which is the degrees for the side cut. So a couple little taps there. And uh, one more. There you go, 20 degrees right there. Well, here we go. I'm cutting the first line that the pattern left. And, uh, you know, it's much, much easier because it's much lighter than it was when I first picked it up. I wouldn't have been able to do any accurate cutting on it when it was as big as it was. These first cuts are right on the line that the pattern made. So I'm going to be pretty careful with it because the more I cut it nice and straight, the less fitting I got to do is basically what that's about. It's pretty easy. I don't need a bunch of wood hanging out the other side of the blade. I just need it just like that. And uh, it cuts really, really nice. Real nice. You can hear it just screaming. You can push it through there as fast as you can possibly imagine. The other thing I can say to you is this is not a ship saw. This is a regular band saw. So the table is tilted. Now, if I were to let go of that piece, its tendency is it wants to slide downhill and bind on the blade. So that's the difference between a band saw and a ship saw. You know, a ship saw, the blade tilts in a slot, some of them, and some of them the table slides over when it tilts. This just tilts at the table. You know, this saw right here has a lot of set in the teeth as well. Sometimes I set the teeth myself because I want it to cut, cut much wider without having a narrower blade. Now I'm going to cut the radius right around. And I have to be really careful at this because, you know, if you drifted off that line a little bit, you could have quite a bit of work to do to get it smoothed out. You have to stay focused because 
If you don't, you'll drift. You don't want that. So you go around patiently, no matter how good the saw is cutting. You don't want to cut real fast. You want to cut accurate. That's what you want to do. It saves you work later. You know, I'm the guy that has to smooth the thing up, not somebody else. So I want it as good as it can be. And now you can see it's just 12 inches wide where it swings through the throat of the saw, just like that. It goes right around. Obviously, I planned that out, otherwise I'd have gotten stuck right there. This cut around the radius is really going to show because that figuring that you see in the top of it actually extends right around the after part of it. So, you know, we're going to smooth that up for sure. And the points of it are basically guaranteed or line right up with all those points on the top. So it's going to look extraordinary, really. Well, there's that little breast hook sawn right out. And uh, it just came out great. That little bandsaw of mine cuts so well. So we cut this right here 20 degrees from the top. And my little bandsaw just sneezes at stuff like that. It just doesn't even know it's cutting. It's so sharp and so well set up that, uh, you know, it's really a useful tool. It went right around that radius on a 20 degree angle without even thinking about it. You know, and all the other cuts. This is 20 degrees. 20 degrees here where it meets the hull. And it was 36 degrees in the front. And I, I tell you, I've got it lined up with these uh, annual rings right here, so they'd be right down the middle. And you've got that dockless, like I said, that looks really nice, actually, when it's finished, really nice. That's a big breast hook right there. Now I've got to take and cut the thickness of it down a little tiny bit, so it's the same thickness all the way around. All right, we're going to put our breast hook in place right now. I've done quite a bit of work on it. I rounded the top of it with electric plane. I fit it with an electric plane, battery powered electric plane. And uh, you know, it was pretty handsome when I was doing it, but in place, it just looks fantastic. Put a couple screws in it just partly, just to hold it there. And we're gonna take a look at it. It is one handsome breast hook, this thing is. Really, really nice. It's got all the features. These are the annual rings right here. And uh, they're all centered right between the center of the stem and the center of this radius. I mean, it's just incredible that they'd be that uniform and pointed in the middle like that. Uh, right in here is the medullary rays that you see coming up like flex because they're not flat with the surface. I've also put a little bit of a crown in it like this because, you know, you want the water to roll off. You don't want it to be perfectly flat, even though the water would still roll off. You know, it looks great. Those are your annual rings like you talked about. And this radius right here, it came out really smooth. You could plane it in this direction really easily, but you couldn't plane it in this direction. It would just wreck it. It would just pull up pieces of it. And uh, you have to learn how to deal with these things, actually. You know, how are you going to get them to this shape? Because I've shaped the top of it, you know, all the way across, and it's kind of flat in the middle. Look how tight the fit is right here. That's an electric plane that did that. Now let me give you an idea what this thing's going to look like when it's done. This is denatured alcohol, and I'm going to dump some on there, and just take my hand and wipe it around like that. That'll pretty much be what it's going to look like when it's varnished, just like that. How's that grab you? Look how great it looks with the alcohol in there. That's exactly what it's going to look like with varnish on there, except it'll be more shiny than this. You can see the annual rings, like I said, right in here more plainly when you get it wet. And, uh, you know, you can see the points all lined up. This darkness is something to do with the crotch between the branch and the, and the trunk. But uh, I don't really know exactly what that's all about, but it sure looks pretty in there. And uh, when it's really wet or varnished, it's just going to pop like crazy. We're going to take it out and bed it in place. And uh, I'm not going to disturb the bedding until it's dry. And then we're going to go back aft and work on the lodging knees.